It's now Tuesday, 2nd of November, and we are on the roof terrace again, for breakfast. Yesterday, we went across Gallagher Bridge. The outline plan for today is to go to the south coast and go the other way, to the city walls. We first walk up to that area in front of Aya Sophia, and have a minute looking round there. After that, we must find our way southwards, to the coastline, because we want to pick up a local train on that railway down there and go along the coast to Dicula, where we want to see the south end of the city wall. But we start first, remember, with our wanderer in the Hippodrome area. And the cameraman seems to have taken over the narration. Right, just another chance to get orientated. There is Aya Sophia. My hotel is just to the left there. Now if we come round here, we've got this circle of pond and the other side of that road is the Basilica underground water storage. So we'll come a little further we get to the little mosque where we attended prayers the other day and up here Sultana Mosque but then perhaps you'd better not rely on me to be a guide around Istanbul I can't even find Kazabil Fountain. I thought it was just behind me. So I've come right up to Sultan Afwin Mosque now. Looking at the map just makes it worse. They seem to have got it upside down. I wonder if it's up there. Well, I can't see it there. Perhaps it's back out here again. I mean, it's in the Hippodrome, one of the biggest things around here. I can't find it. Yes, so we've come out of there. And yes, we're now in the Hippodrome, as you can see. I'm sure they've got the maps upside down. So, just to orient you, look right Just a minute. We can see that Millennium Stone again and Casabel's Fountain. Shush! Casabel's Fountain is just down there. But we've seen it anyway. We've gone the other way. This is the lower part of the Egyptian obelisk. We've seen the higher part before. Chap selling flutes here. This chap at the top here looks like a doctor. He's got an operating mask on anyway. And this is supposed to be three intertwined bronze serpents. And this is where the chariot should turn round and the races. Constantine covered it with bronze. Jeez. Don't know why they've gone away. Now of course when we say Constantine we mean Constantine the seventh. Porphyrogenitus or something. Tenth century. So we're at the end of the hippodrome now. Not sure where to go next. I think I'm heading south, so let's see where the sun is. Trying to get them to the coast on the south end, and I think that mosaic museum is on the way. So let's try down there. Right, so we came down there. And just down there is perhaps that big mosque again. Anyway, I think we're getting near the sea. 
another this mosque. There you are, Ketuk Aya Sophia. Yes, almost by accident, we found little Aya Sophia. This is a very important building for us to see. Firstly, it is all but certain that it was designed by the two people who designed Big Aya Sophia. The building of Little started in 527 and the building of Big started in 532. This together with some vague resemblances caused some to believe that Little was a sort of trial building for Big all during the reign of Justinian, if you remember. And something else happened during Justinian's reign. The Church of San Vitale was completed in 548 at Ravenna, and although building had commenced somewhat earlier, it was completed using the central plan of Little Aya Sophia. It is no doubt the case that this church would have had a similar wealth of mosaics to San Vitale before they were covered up, or in some way removed, when this church was converted to a mosque. And we can add one more credential to this building. It was used by the acknowledged top architect of mosques, Sinan, as a model, with its concept of an octagon, inscribed inside an irregular quadrilateral, for his Rustam Pasha mosque, which you can see in part 11. Can I just break into the story for a minute, and remark on these typical Byzantine capitals, some of which bear the initials of Justinian and also his wife, Empress Theodora, who we met at Ravenna, in those mosaics. The building of this church, which was dedicated to St. Sergius and St. Bacchus, was one of Justinian's first actions upon becoming emperor and there's a story behind this. Apparently, during Justin's reign, Justinian was accused of plotting against the throne. He was arrested and sentenced to death. However, in a dream, St. Sergius and Bacchus appeared before the Emperor Justin and vouched for Justinian's innocence. Justinian was freed and vowed to build and dedicate a church to the saints which he did, as we have seen. After the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople in 1453, the church remained untouched for about 50 years. Then, between 1506 and 1513, it was transformed into a mosque. So we need now to go from more stairs to that gallery there. Perhaps now we are upstairs, if you remember how spacious the upstairs galleries at Big Eye of Sophia were, it is easier to see how much bigger the whole building is than this one. This is not a museum, like Big Aya Sophia, it is still a living mosque, so there is no entrance fee, though there is a receptacle for donations. Let's have a look outside. Right, so just inside the gate we've got a little graveyard there, ablution facilities, and just over here we've got like a cloister. I don't know how we're going to get across that railway line, but anyway, here's the cloister. It's 
to the shops right now. See, you could sit in here, have your tea. But we are going to sit outside. So, here I am now, having my chai in this cloister. I don't know how to lash out. Having another look at the grave markers, I believe that the carved objects on top of the gravestones, which I presume are headwear, indicate the status or rank of the deceased. So there we are, Kachakaya Sophia. Now, a glance at your pocket city guide, will remind you that quite nearby, is another mosque worth a look, Sokalu, Mechsmit Pasha Mosque. And yes, I think we can see the top of one of the minarets there. <laughs>